So this screencast is going to pick up with um, just kind of finishing up Douglas MacArthur. So as I kind of was explaining to my classes, he is the leader of the Philippines, the leader of the American forces in the Philippines, like during the time of World War II. And when the Philippines comes under a Japanese attack, which is kind of like the first main act of aggression in Japan, or in, I'm sorry, in the Pacific Islands, against Americans anyway, um, against American forces, uh, he's kind of forced to um, evacuate, and that's not really what he wanted to do. That was a military order that he was following. They didn't want him to be captured, um, but he promises all of his forces and other Filipino people, like, I shall return, and he will follow through with that promise later on. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is kind of the act action that is considered a bit of um, retaliation against and because of Pearl Harbor. Um, and this is going to be led by Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle. He is going to lead an air raid on, ta on Tokyo, which is the capital of Japan, and several other Japanese cities. And this attack was very, very successful. It was completed in the spring of 1942, so just several months actually after Pearl Harbor, not even a full year. And um, again, just kind of attacking and attacking and bombing um, the main military parts of Tokyo, Japan. Very successful. We'll now talk about the battle at the Coral Sea. So the main two Allied powers in World War II were America and as well as Australia. I know we kind of mentioned Australia maybe or maybe not being involved, but as they are kind of in risk or at risk for being attacked by Japan, they do join the Allied forces eventually. Basically, the Japanese had been trying to invade Australia for a while, and at the Coral Sea, it's basically a naval a navy battle. Okay. Um, with that being said, it's not uh, it's not ships fighting. It's it's really an air battle, but they're using their naval fleet and they're using aircraft carriers, as pictured on the screen. Um, to it's, so it's happening in the ocean, but it's happening over the ocean, the plains, if that makes sense. So basically, at the Coral Sea which is like on the way to Australia for the Japanese, they are stopped. And this is the first time allies are able to kind of stop the Japanese in their tracks from invading a certain territory, like since the whole war had begun. So this is a pretty big success. We'll now quickly address the Battle of Midway. The Battle of Midway is considered the turning point for the war in um, in Japan or in the Pacific in, in favor of the Allies. So the Japanese had tried to take over the island of Midway, which is located actually just northwest of Hawaii. But American naval forces were able to um, kind of be prepared for this impending attack and they actually send out planes to find and locate the Japanese fleet. They, The Navy also torpedoes some of these ships and um, fire upon some of these planes and basically were able to eliminate a lot of Japanese naval equipment that would have been used to continue their attack on the island of Midway. So this is considered a huge success um, for the Allied forces in Asia. And pretty much after this battle, the Allies are going to start what's called island hopping. And with island hopping, the Allies are kind of basically planning to kind of start in the Southeast Pacific, like kind of seen on the map, and take little by little 
all the islands that Japan had kind of conquered at this point, like while expanding their empire, like take back and free and liberate all these little islands from Japanese control. So like kind of liberating one island at a time. It was really important to secure these islands on the way to Japan because if we do plan to, if we do plan to launch a big air raid or invasion of Japan, we need places to start from. And so we have to kind of capture some of this territory. The last thing, I might have said we're going to stop with um, island hopping, but I just want to get through one more big battle. And I do want you to know that we're kind of needing to understand the difference between like the Coral Sea and Midway. Guadalcanal was a battle that actually lasted six months. Um, and it was actually the first land battle, first major land battle that resulted in a Japanese defeat. Um, for the Allies. Other defeats so far have been done kind of in the water on the sky, but this is on land. So we are able to secure and defeat the Japanese at Guadalcanal, um, but what's kind of creepy is that Guadalcanal was considered kind of a jungle and very scary, scary island. So it just kind of paints a different picture. Like it's nicknamed the Island of Death. So it paints a very different picture on what type of territories and surfaces, uh, you know, the Allies would be forced to fight on as compared to Europe. Okay, so write those notes down. We'll pick up with a few more notes in class tomorrow, and then we're going to spend time merely on review. All right, I hope you have a good day.